Hello. In this video, I'm going to be explaining how to do um, rotating an equation using parametric equations in Desmos. So, for example, I have an example here. So, this dotted line is the uh, angle it's being rotated at, and this is a sine wave. So, uh, it's rotated currently 0 degrees. And then if I do this, that's 45 degrees. Right now, it's in radians. So, this is um, pi over 4. So, that's how that's going. So, you, the dotted line, if I get rid of that, you can just see it's the sine wave and it's curving or it's just rotating and there's no um, distortion or problems with it so um, we're gonna hide that for now and I'm gonna explain how you would accomplish this so currently this line is just or actually I'm gonna use this other one just for you know messing around so it's just a parametric equation so this left portion is the X and this Y portion or the second portion is the Y so um, X is always gonna be T times cosine a, and a is just a constant. So if it's zero, it's just always going to be um, changing because if cosine is cosine of zero is one, and t is a value that changes. So um, basically, what the computer does is it starts at the lowest t and then it keeps going around, um, and that's how you can make like they're not functions because if you remember this. Here, this this is not a function because it's overlapped. There's multiple y values for an x, so it, it allows you just to determine what y and x both are. Um, and so this is important for important for when you're rotating a function because it's not actually going to be a function anymore. So, anyways, what I wanted to do was make the sine wave, right? Um, but the problem with that, let's say I add sine t. So basically, that'll just add the sine of t, you know, because t is less over here, and then it changes. And that works fine if you're at zero degrees, but if you turn to something like this, you can see that's not correct. That's distorted. And the reason for that is there's no, um, if we compare it to this one, it's not going in on the x. So it's always staying the same constant x, like moving along the line. Um, but it is changing the y. And then another problem is that, like, let's say you were to go up there. Um, it doesn't go the correct length because it's subtracting that sign, so it's not correct. So let's move that back over here, and let's get rid of the correct one. Um, so if we wanted to add the effect to the x, we can just do sine t, and that looks fine again. And if we change it to here, it, it still has problems, and the problems are. Um, Oh, that's sine 5. That's why it's wrong. Okay, this is what it should look like. Sorry about that. Okay, so you can see it's different, and, it, and you can see the x is affecting the sine because it pushes it in more and then pulls it back over here. Um, but that is still not correct, and that's because the sine and the um, on the x and the y are always being um, applied, even if it were something like 45 degrees where that is they'd each be weaker. They wouldn't both be at full strength. So how we can fix this is by multiplying. So I'm going to start with the y. We're going to multiply this sine t by the cosine of the angle that we're at. Oh, what's wrong with this? Oh, I have to put parentheses here. And we have to do this one times uh, sine of the angle. And let's same problem here with the t. This is actually going to be, I think, minus, if I, if I recall correctly. Yeah. All right, so the explanation for this, so I'll explain from the y side, is that um, cosine of a, so let's say a is 0, so a is 0 right now, and the cosine of 0 is 1. So that means that if we're at a flat angle, um, this y distortion with the sine here so this is all like parentheses around. This is on full blast. And then if you're at over here, for example, there's no y um, sine adjustment because since it's pi over 2, well, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So it negates this function being you know used, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, so and then this x thing does the same, same thing. So if you go through it at zero degrees there should be no x distortion distortion from the sine you know graph uh, and so if we do um, sine of zero 
this is the this is the angle part. This is the you know part that corresponds to that. So sine of zero is one. So at oh I, I messed up the um sine of zero is zero. Sorry. So sine of zero is zero. So it will negate this whole part because it's not it. There's no x part of it to, for it to be adjusting. But then if you're at say pi over two sine of pi over two is one. Um, then this is at full blast, so it's it's only x manipulation of the line, and there's no y manipulation. So if we put these both on, you can see you can't see the blue one because they're flex, you know, was drawn on top of it. But um, this allows you to rotate your graph, and you can see it goes in a circle because it's always the same distance because it's not being distorted. Um, and so something interesting you could do with this, so if I'm going to just delete this one because we don't need it, is you can do things other than um, you know, sine of t. So you can do, uh, what else? You could do, I mean, this is basic. You could do cosine, which is not the most exciting. Um, you know, it's the same concept. So you can see this is the cosine graph instead. But you can do a bunch of other stuff. So you could do um, t squared. Let's do t squared. And then if you can see here, we can rotate the parabola. Um, and so it won't be a function uh, in many cases, so because there's overlapping. If you rotate a, the parabola at all, it's not a function anymore. Um, so, anyways, yeah, that's what I want to show you. That's Desmos um, graphing um, parametric rotations.